Welcome to the fifth round of the European Track Racing Championship in Hungary. The track circus has enjoyed a seven week break, but now, and in soaring summer temperatures, the second half of the season gets underway in capital city Budapest, picturesquely situated on the Danube. The Hungara Ring, located 20 kilometers from the city center and opened in 1986, provides the stage for the four European Championship races this weekend. But before the trucks roar into race action around the 4.381 kilometer track, the first destination is the heart of the city. On Thursday afternoon, the entire truck show travels under its own steam to meet and greet the fans who give the ETRC drivers a warm and heartfelt welcome. Naturally, the man at the center of attention is local hero, Norbert Kish. Well, it's really awesome, you know, I, I really like the fact that uh, so many people started to like track racing in, the, in these last years in Hungary. And uh, I'm really happy that we had a really good uh, race uh, weekend. After all the countless requests for autographs are fulfilled, the trucks and their police escort return to the circuit via the motorway. Czech Bagheera driver Adam Latsko arrives at the Hungara Ring with a slender one-point lead in the championship. His goal is to defend the lead in the standings. We will see tomorrow after the maybe time practice or after the races. We, we will see and I hope it's good. Jochen Hahn is Latsko's closest rival. Hard fought, but entirely fair battles between the pair have been a feature of the season so far. The German MAN driver reckons he has a decent chance of turning the tables in the championship here in Hungary. We have four day test in the break. Why? Yeah, we must found a little bit in the lap time, so Adam is a hard concurrent and we must go a little bit forward. However, the media and fan spotlight here in Budapest is firmly and near exclusively on Norbert Kish. The reigning champion is a local idol, instantly surrounded by crowds of fans whenever he emerges in public. After a tough start to the season with a new team and a new truck, Kish is looking forward to his home Grand Prix. For sure the, the track improved and the lap times will improve compared to last year because uh, the, the new surface and the new curves and everything, I think the rip is quite good. The setup is not yet so good. Um, I still have some problems with the balance, but it's okay, we have some ideas, we will change some things and then we will have uh, one more practice today. British ace Ryan Smith took over Norbert Kish's drive for the Hungarian OXO Energy Truck Race Team. The man who currently leads the British Truck Racing Championship has often showed immense driving and racing skill this season. He's hoping to build on that here at his team's home race. Anything is possible, we are fast. And uh, I think we will show tomorrow that we are really fast. But you know, it's one step at a time. We are learning, you know, the team, the team is fantastic. And you know, the circuit is amazing, uh, but there's not many, uh, not many chances for error because everything's so close but you know we are we are very hopeful fingers crossed the grid formed for the first race Jochen Hahn seals the perfect starting position for the first race of the day with an outstanding performance in qualifying claiming the super pole and starting at the head of the field on Saturday at midday everybody know the hot races so from this side I think we found the setup we can make a, a little step a little. Alongside him, there's a minor surprise. Ryan Smith posts the second best time in qualifying and starts alongside Hahn on the front row. The Brit is in a visibly upbeat mood. MAN driver Anthony Janik starts from third. The French driver has frequently shown his appetite for a good fight in the course of the season. Norbert Kish starts from the second row, but he's utterly determined to push on from there in front of the home crowd. The championship leader, Adam Latsko, only fifth on the starting grid. 
during the frantic quest for starting positions, he was not able to display his full potential. We have some, some small problem with the setup because when the, here is a new tramac and with this we make a fight and we don't know what we must do. Now we change something, it's risk or we don't know and we will see after the race. From the rolling start, Jochen Hahn stays in the lead. Ryan Smith lines up just behind. Janiek and Kiss are in the fight for third position. They lightly touch each other, but it's Janiek who prevails. Behind them is championship leader Latko. In the first few corners, there's a crash involving Ellen Law, Steffi Halm and Yeri Foreman. Halm spins, Foreman's front and Ellen Law's back end are both damaged. There is a large amount of smoke coming from Ellen Law's truck after the crash. The wheel arch is rubbing against one of the rear wheels. At the front of the field, Smith is on Hahn's tail. Janiek, Kiss and Latsko follow behind. Steffi Halm has fallen to last place due to the collision near the start. The race to catch up begins. At the end of the second lap, Yeri Foreman comes into the pits. Due to the crash at the start, his race is over. At the front, Hahn opens up a small gap back to Smith. Now it is Kish's turn to get ahead of Janiek. The Hungarian would certainly like to reach a podium position. At the end of the third lap, Kish gets alongside Janiek. The Frenchman loses out. Kish passes and has now moved up to third position. Kish's determination to move up has not yet been satisfied. Cheered on by thousands of Hungarian fans, he goes after the Brit Ryan Smith on the next lap. Meanwhile, Steffi Halm has been successful in catching up. A place in the top eight is her goal. The next race will start with places one to eight in reverse order. As such, Halm would like to secure a good starting position for race two. Last lap, Hahn has a clear lead from his pursuers and he's on his way to an uncontested victory. Kish launches one final attack on Smith. The latter takes an unfavourable wide line and in doing so leaves the door wide open for Kish, an opening which the reigning champion seizes upon immediately and so moves up to second place. Jochen Hahn is victorious in the first race in Hungary. At the same time, he takes over the lead in the championship. No, oh, it looks easy, but it's a, it's a big fight. I'm every lap on the limit. I have luck. Wine have a big couple with, not a couple, but he have, he's in, in the fight with, with, with Nobby, and from this side I can hold the gap. No, I'm happy. Kish claims second position on the podium, ahead of Smith, who comes home third. A quick glance at the final result of the first race in Hungary. Janiek in fourth ahead of Latsko. Sixth place goes to Gert Kurba. Seventh place goes to Steffi Halm, who achieved her goal after some brilliant catch-up work. And Frankie Wojciech, with his eighth place finish, secures pole for the second race. The starting grid for race two, and it's Frankie Wojciech right at the front of the grid. Absolutely happy to eight position to first race and stay to pole position to second race. I don't, I don't know what it is to stay to to first place and maybe, maybe two years to go to solder. But Steffi Halm is second on the grid, lying in wait, looking to pass Wojciech as early as possible. I hope uh, I can win the start and uh, make a gap between me and the others and uh, hopefully collect as many points as possible. In the final corner of the formation lap, the field takes shape. The lights turn green, all clear for takeoff. The Talk Monsters race towards the first corner. Wojciech gets away well and establishes a lead in front of Halm. Latsko and Korba are next to each other, bumping into each other gently as they round turn one. At the back, Andre Kurzim, Ellen Law and Sasha Lentz all tangle. 
Lentz and Law are wedged together and stop for a moment on the track. Back to the leaders, Wojciech is in front of Halm and behind them, Latsko descends upon Kerber. Smith and Kish are also locked in battle. Janjek in fifth runs too wide, struggling to control his truck. Wojciech also defends his lead in the subsequent corners from Halm, who is putting enormous pressure on him. Get Kerber and Anthony Janjek tangle. The manoeuvre only costs the Lion racing truck a few plastic parts. Following this, Kish struggles against Janjek. At the front, after an eventful first lap, Halm launches an attack on Wojciech, which he deflects. Behind them, there is a collision between Ryan Smith and Andre Kurzin. A three-way battle for fourth place between Kerber, Janiek and Kish rages, but leader Wojciech makes a mistake shortly before the end of the second lap, which Halm immediately exploits and takes the lead. Latsko also spots his chance and gets alongside his compatriot on the long final straight, but he has the outside line and remains behind him. The duel between the longest serving driver in the series and the number two in the current championship defines events in the final laps. Steffi Halm breaks away, and behind Wojciech, there is now a whole line of pursuers awaiting the chance to pass the Czech driver. Get Kurber gets impatient because Latsko is still holding him up. He attacks the Freightliner driver and moves past into third place. In the corner before the home straight, Kish gets alongside Latsko, makes the better exit, and duly claims fourth place. Kerber increases the pressure on Wojciech, letting the number two man know he's there, but the MAN driver firmly defends his position. Now Kish appears in Kerber's mirrors and even runs into his rear end, forcing his way past into third place. Kerber in turn now has to defend himself from an attack from Latsko. He runs wide and drops to fifth. Halm is speeding further and further ahead of the field, but behind her, things are getting more and more intense. Kish repeatedly comes knocking behind Wojciech and Latsko, Korber as well, and Hahn tangled with each other in the final corner. Korber slips to sixth place and comes increasingly under pressure from Janiek. The Frenchman ultimately barges his way past the Iveco driver. A short while later, Kerber makes a braking error. He rejoins far behind. Behind Wojciech, it is again getting very tight. Hahn tries to make up places, makes a braking mistake, crashes into Kish and forces Latsko to the outside. The beneficiaries of this situation are Janiek and Smith. Yet, Janiek cannot enjoy being in third place for long at all, as just one lap later, Kish races up alongside him and takes back second position. Completely uncontested and with an enormous lead, Stephanie Halm crosses the finishing line, gaining a further victory after her success at the Nürburgring. After having held off the pack for 11 laps, Wojciech turns into the finishing straight for the last time in second place. And what follows is destined to become a subject of heated debate. Kish crashes into the back of Wojciech, who then smashes violently into the pit wall. Here's the situation involving Wojciech and Kish in slow motion. Wojciech is in front, Kish takes the inside line and runs into the rear end of the MAN truck. Wojciech loses control of his rig and ends up in the wall. The crash again, this time from Kish's onboard camera. Podium, the dominant victor Halm is in first place, Janek in second and Kish in third, but it is the final crash which is being discussed in the background.
I was watching him all the time and I was surprised that he was so good. And uh, yeah, it's a really pity for him that um, he crashed now really hard because second place for him would be perfect. Huh? Wojciech's truck is recovered and brought back to the Czech truck racing team's tent. A clearly disappointed Frankie Wojciech returns to his team after the medical centre has given him a checkup. This is not correct, not correct. Must be second and third position, but it's a first moment, it's okay. It must be to every, every drivers to win, but it's why not let me second and orbit in third position? It's also to podium. With that, race weekend is over for the Czech. Kish, the Mercedes driver, sees the situation a little differently. When we enter the last turn, I see that I don't have a chance anymore because it's the last lap and we're going up to the checkered flag and I was practically giving up, you know. Uh, and he was still not accelerating out of the turn. He was, he was keeping off the throttle and trying to stay on the inside, you know. And that's why I touch him. Indeed, I touch him. A look at the final result. The stewards hold a long meeting and caution Kish for the crash. However, that has no influence on the final result. Fourth place goes to Latsko. Smith comes fifth. And in sixth place, Jochen Hahn secures enough points to maintain his challenge for the lead in the championship. An exciting end to racing on the Saturday at the Hungara Ring, with the fans looking forward to two more races on Sunday. They flock to the Hungara Ring in droves. The paddock is full. In the ETRC fan village, there is plenty of action for fans both young and old. And the rush during autograph hour is never ending, especially for Norbert Kirsch. Race three of the weekend takes to the grid. Kish also shines in his sport. He has the fastest time in the morning fight for pole position, and with that, the best starting position for the race. I think Ewan has the best engine in the field right now, so, uh, yeah, we'll see. I will try to catch the light the best I can, and we usually have to do a gear shift, so I will try to do the best gear shift I can do, and we'll see where it takes us, but, I'm afraid the start will be very hard. Next to Kish on the front row, Jochen Hahn. On the second row, Adam Latsko and Anthony Janiek. And two women drivers on row three, Steffi Halm and Alan Law. Race three is go. Kish is on the inside, Hahn the outside. And they fight to be the first driver into the first corner. Hahn prevails and passes Kish to take the lead. Latsko breaks free of the Jeanne, Halm pins a movement and takes third position. Hahn is in the lead in front of Kish, Latsko, Jeanne, Halm and Smith. Behind them, a close three-way battle between Kurva, Law and Lentz. Ryan Smith increases the pressure on Halm and overtakes the winner of the second race. Now it is the Brit who is in fifth place. But Smith is not satisfied with that. Lap after lap, he inches closer to Anthony Janek in his Lion Truck Racing MAN truck, appearing in his rear view mirrors. At the end of the home straight, Smith deviates wildly from the ideal line. Halm slips past on the inside and takes the position. Smith has technical problems and loses speed. But things do not go to plan for Steffi Halm either. She has problems with the steering system and falls back. At the front, no one notices any of this with the places here staying the same until the finish. Jochen Hahn wins from Norbert Kish and Adam Latsko in third place. It's another win for Hahn. We have an impossible good engine today and I have a very good shifting. Directly after the green flag, it's coming the shifting, and then you have a lot of branch to overtake him. You know, in his long time on the seven gear, I hear it and think, okay. Delight among the top three on the podium, and once again, here are the final results: Hahn from Kish from Latsko. Alan Law manages to end up fourth. A great result for the ex-DTM driver. 
Fifth place goes to Sasha Lentz, and Ryan Smith manages sixth despite technical dramas. Steffi Helm could do no better than 13th, though, due to the fault with her truck. Jochen Hahn and Adam Latsko are not just rivals on the track, they're rivals at the dartboard. Three races in Hungary are behind us. The final duel between the two championship contenders lies ahead. Jochen Hahn, thanks to his two victories, is in front of Latsko in the standings with a small gap, but Latsko is lying in wait in case Hahn makes a mistake. The starting grid for the last race of the day, right at the front of the grid, former champion Gert Kurba. He finished eighth due to a penalty in the third race, a blessing in disguise. This means that, thanks to the reverse grid, he starts in pole position for the second race of the day. The Iveco driver has not been this far in front for a long time. I had a lot of problems in the first race today. I had a lot of understeering and we don't know uh, we have saved the problem or not. So, so we will see what I can do. Uh, okay, I am 53 years old now. I don't know I have the nerves or not. <laughs> Bagheera Freightliner driver Yeri Foreman starts second on the grid. Behind him, Ryan Smith and Sasha Lentz. Ellen Law and Adam Latsko are on the third row. And row four is Norbert Kish and Jochen Hahn. At the start, Gert Kurber is already a few truck lengths in front of Foreman on the back straight. The race is on. Kurber pulls away and Ryan Smith passes Foreman to move into second place. Law, Foreman and Lentz try to go round the corner at the same time. But it is Foreman who prevails with Lentz lining up behind Law. And what are the championship leaders doing? Adam Latsko is in sixth place after the start, with Hahn losing a place. He's now only ninth. Latsko puts Lentz under enormous pressure and manages to pass the towing company owner. Others try to follow suit. Kish also shapes to pass Lentz, but the latter doesn't make it easy for the Hungarian. The two trucks keep touching each other. However, Kish prevails, with Hahn also lying in wait behind Lentz. The leading duo of Kurber and Smith uses this skirmish behind to open up a gap. A short time later, Jochen Hahn passes Sasha Lentz for eighth place. Every position brings valuable points for the championship. That's what Latsko would also like for himself. In the indirect duel with Hahn, he has the advantage in this race. He overtakes Eleanor at the end of the long pit straight. Just a short time later, his teammate Foreman lets him pass without a fight. With that, he is in third place, while Hahn holds on to eighth behind Kish. There's a hard struggle between Eleanor and Anthony Janek. Law is far on the outside and off the circuit. Kish and Hahn use the situation to slip past. Kish continually increases the pressure on Janiek. The latter decides attack is the best form of defence. Foreman chooses a bad line and Janiek is better on the brakes. He moves up next to the Czech driver and moves past into fourth place. Shortly before the end of the race, Kish manages to pull past Foreman and into fifth place. The final corner and then the checkered flag. Get Kurba crosses the finishing line as the race winner, followed by Ryan Smith and Adam Latsko. Kurba is delighted, but not for long. The three-time European champion is able to enjoy his victory on the podium. But it's only revealed after the race that following evaluation of the top speed data, Gert Kurba, Ryan Smith and Alan Law were too quick. All three are given time penalties. Adam Latsko then is the winner of the race ahead of Anthony Janek and Norbert Kish. Kurba is only eighth because of the penalty, with Smith coming ninth. Confirmation of a win for Adam Latsko. Great news for him in the championship with his main rival, Jochen Hahn, classified fifth. 
At the top of the table, after a strong weekend from Hahn, 13 points separate him from Adam Latsko. Depending on your culture, the number 13 is seen either as lucky or unlucky. The next round in the Czech Republic will be a home Grand Prix for Adam Latsko. He will make every effort to take the lead away from Hahn in the fight for the title. This means pure excitement at Most in the European Truck Racing Championship.